Starting in Wentzville, Missouri at an interchange with Interstate 70, I-64 runs 954 miles between six states. Welcome to WC Geography, and I'm back today with the fifth episode of Interstates, I-64. Continuing south from 70, I-64 continues through southern St. Louis, concurrent with US-61 and US-40 for most of the way. In Lake St. Louis, 64 exits with Missouri Route 364, which is a non-interstate spur into St. Charles and Maryland Heights. 64 meets Missouri Route 94 in Weldon Spring, and then curves south and crosses the Missouri River, entering Chesterfield. In Chesterfield, I-64 meets Missouri Route 340 and Missouri Route 141. Down the road in Westwood, I-64 meets Interstate 270, a downtown St. Louis bypass that spurs into Illinois. It then meets U.S. Route 67 in Frontenac, where it loses concurrency with U.S. 61. I-64 meets Interstate 170 in Clayton, where 170 ends and 64 continues to downtown St. Louis. In downtown STL, 64 meets bigger roads such as Big Bend Boulevard and Kings Highway Boulevard, before serving as the eastern end of Interstate 44 and beginning concurrency with Interstate 55. 64 and 55 cross the Poplar Street Bridge over the Mississippi River into East St. Louis, Illinois. In Illinois, the 64-55 duo meets Illinois Route 3 and Illinois Route 15, before curving north and having a spaghetti interchange with Interstate 70. In this mess of an interchange, I-64 exits 55 and continues east towards Mount Vernon. I-64 meets the routes of Illinois 111, Interstate 255, Illinois 157, and Illinois 159 in East St. Louis. Outside of O'Fallon, 64 meets Illinois State Route 158 and U.S. Route 50. South of Lebanon, 64 also meets Illinois Route 4. Interstate 64 continues through southern central Illinois, meeting routes in the cities of New Baden, Oakville, and Nashville. In Richview, 64 meets US 51 before meeting Interstate 57 in Mount Vernon. In Mount Vernon, 64 turns south for a bit, becoming concurrent with I-57. Remember me mentioning Illinois State Route 15 a minute ago? Well, 64 and 57 meet it again in Mount Vernon. The two also meet Route 148 before losing concurrency with each other. Leaving Mount Vernon, 64 exits with Illinois Routes 37 and 142. Down the road, Interstate 64 meets Illinois Route 242 in the literal middle of nowhere, and then meets U.S. Route 45 south of Fairfield. Finally, 64 meets Illinois Route 1 in Grayville, where it crosses the Wabash River into Indiana. I-64 really doesn't meet any major routes in Indiana for a couple of miles. Its first major route is US-41 in Hobstadt. A few miles down the road, I-64 meets the incomplete Interstate 69 north of Evansville. I-64 meets several smaller routes in the towns of Linville, Selvin, and Dale. In Dale, 64 meets US-231, which continues south to Santa Claus. Down the road, 64 exits with Indiana State Route 162 south of Ferdinand. From here, 64 exits with some smaller state routes, but doesn't meet any major routes until Corridon. In Corridon, which was the Indiana State Capitol a long time ago, 64 meets both state roads 337 and 135. A little bit after that, I-64 meets State Road 62 and, confusingly, meets State Road 64 in Duncan. It also meets US Route 150. It then meets Interstate 265 in New Albany before turning southeast and crossing the Ohio River into Louisville, Kentucky. Once in Louisville, 64 spurs off with Interstate 264 and then follows the Ohio River coastline for a mile or so. Also in Louisville, I-64 meets the routes of U.S. Route 31 West, U.S. Route 60, U.S. Route 42, Interstate 65, Interstate 71, and Kentucky State Road 1020. Outside of downtown, 64 meets 264 again, and then meets 265 again. From here, 64 leaves Louisville and goes through the small towns of Simpsonville, Shelbyville, and Bridgeport. Down the road in Frankfurt, I-64 meets U.S. Route 127 and U.S. 60 again. In Midway, 64 meets U.S. 62 and U.S. 421. In Lexington, I-64 begins a concurrency with Interstate 75. The two meet U.S. 68 before 64 exits 75 on the east side of Lexington. In Winchester, 64 meets the Burt T. Combs Mountain Parkway. Up the road in Mount Sterling, I-64 meets U.S. 60 again and also meets U.S. 460, as well as Kentucky State Route 11. 64 meets State Road 36 and U.S. 60 again in Owingsville. Now at this point, 64 is almost in the Appalachian Mountains, so towns are becoming more and more spread out as we go. A long ways away from Owingsville, 64 meets Kentucky Route 32 in Moorhead. Even further down the road, I-64 meets Kentucky Route 2 in Olive Hill. After that, it meets U.S. 60 again and counts crossroads. It then meets State Routes 1 and 7 in Grayson. After that, 64 meets US 60 for the final time in Kentucky in Colton. Finally, I-64 meets US 23 in England Hill, where it crosses the Big Sandy River into West Virginia. Now in Canova, West Virginia, I-64 exits with US 52 before entering Soreto and eventually Huntington. In Huntington, 64 meets West Virginia State Routes 10 and 527. 64 then meets US 60 before exiting Huntington. 64 then passes through the cities of Barbersville, Ona, Milton, Culloden, Hurricane, Tees Valley, and Scary. 
outside of Nitro, 64 crosses the Kanawha River. It then has exits in the suburbs of Cross Lanes, Institute, and Dunbar. In South Charleston, which is strangely north of Charleston, 64 crosses the Kanawha River again. Here it has exits with US Route 60 and 119 before crossing the Kanawha River for a third time into Charleston. In Charleston, 64 meets Interstate 77 and 79, acting as the southern end of 79 and turning south to become concurrent with 77. 64 and 77 parallel the Kanawha River through the towns of Marmot, Chesapeake, and Chelyon where the two have an exit with US-60. 77 and 64 turn south from here, where they continue into the rough terrain of the central Appalachian Mountains. 64-77 goes to the extremely tiny towns of Dry Branch, Standard, Mahan, Mossy, Long Branch, and Pax. In Prosperity, 77-64 has an exit with US-19, and the two proceed to have several smaller exits in the city of Beckley. On the south side of Beckley, 64 loses its concurrency with 77, and 64 continues east towards Glen Morgan. Down the road, 64 has exits with Crow, Bragg, Sandstone, and Green Sulphur Springs, as well as Dawson and Sample. Black Church, where 64 meets its longtime friend, US 60. In Alta, 64 exits with State Route 12. I-64 then has an interchange with US 219 and Lewisburg. In White Sulphur Springs, 64 has a one-lane exit with US 60. 60 begins a concurrency with 64, and from here, Interstate 64 crosses into its sixth and final state, Virginia. A couple miles into Virginia, 64 loses its concurrency with 60, and then begins a concurrency with US Route 220 and US 60 again in Covington. 64-60-220 has exits in Low Moor, Selma, and Clifton Forge, where 220 leaves the concurrency. From here, 64 and 60 have exits in Nicely Town, Longdale Furnace, and Cares Creek, which is where 60 leaves the concurrency. In East Lexington, which is confusingly north of Lexington, I-64 exits with US-11, and from there turns north and begins a concurrency with I-81. On 81-64, there is another exit with US Route 11. 81-64 passes through but doesn't necessarily exit in the towns of Timber Ridge, Decatur, Fairfield, Rafine, Spotswood, Greenville, and Mint Spring. In Staunton, the duo exits with Virginia State Route 262, and then 64 exits onto its own road again. In Waynesboro, 64 exits with US Route 340 and 250, which begins to parallelize 64. In Yancey Mills, 64 exits with the US 250 again, but then becomes a lonely road until Charlottesville. In Charlottesville, 64 has an interchange with US 19, and then exits with 250 again. In Zion Crossroads, 64 exits with US 15. Down the road in, well, the middle of nowhere, 64 exits with Virginia State Route 208. After this, 64 turns southeast and has an exit with US Route 522 in Gum Springs. 64 then has an exit in Oilville. I-64 continues southeast where it meets Virginia State Route 288 in Short Pump. It then proceeds to have an exit with Interstate 295. In Henrico, 64 has four exits, two of which are for US 250. In Dumbarton, 64 exits with US Route 33. After this, 64 has a spaghetti interchange with I-195 and I-95, which ends in 64 and 95 becoming concurrent. Now in Richmond, 64 exits with US Route 301 before losing I-95 and exiting with US Route 360. Outside of Richmond, 64 exits once again with I-295 and parallels US-60 once again. 64 has officially left the Appalachian Mountains and has exits in Bottoms Bridge, Browns Corner, Carps Corner, and Slaterville. From here, Interstate 64 continues southeast, where it exits with Virginia Route 199 and Williamsburg. Also in Williamsburg are roads that will take you to Colonial Jamestown and Yorktown, where you will find many historic sites and museums. Back on 64 again, there is an exit with US-60 in Grove and an exit for Grafton before entering Newport News. In Newport News, 64 has an exit with US Route 17 and US-258, as well as an exit with US-60. It also has an exit with its own spur out I-664. After crossing the James River into Norfolk, 64 has its final exit with US-60 and then has an exit with US-460, as well as Interstate 564. 64 then works its way around the outside of Norfolk, exiting with US Routes 13 and 58 as well as its own spur out Interstate 264. Quick note about 264, it actually works as the southern terminus for US-60 in Virginia Beach. Back on 64, it has a few more exits in Norfolk before it enters Chesapeake. Now in Chesapeake, 64 contradicts its directional signage as East Interstate 64 and turns southwest, where it meets Interstate 464. 64 then has access with US 17 and US 460 again. Finally, 64 meets its end with two of its own spur routes, 264 and 664, ending in Chesapeake, Virginia. Wow, that was a long one. Not quite as long as Interstate 80, but it still took a while. I'm planning on doing Interstate 43 after this, so you can look forward to a return to the Midwest next time.